Hello and welcome to part 6 of a new Half-Life modding tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create custom textures and use them in your mod. All the required software is linked in the description. You may remember me talking about WAD files when you set up Hammer in part 2, and that the WAD format originates from the famous company id Software. All textures in the Gold Source engine are stored in these WAD packages, as Gold Source was built upon the Quake engine which was made by id Software. The textures themselves are simple bitmap images. If you wanted to, you can make these textures in paint. These bitmap images are then mitmapped, which is the term for making several copies of an image, each at a lower resolution. This was necessary at the time, as although the textures take up more memory, it becomes much easier for Half-Life to render the textures to draw them on the screen. After all, the further away a texture is in the scene, the less detail is visible. So by mipmapping you can reduce the rendering time, because the renderer won't have to scan as many pixels unnecessarily. So rather than scanning all the pixels in a massive HD texture image, you can just scan a few pixels in a fairly low resolution image because it's far away. To use custom textures in Half-Life we need to actually create a WAD file for them to go in, so that Hammer and Half-Life can use them. Thankfully, a programmer exists that will allow us to do just that as well as carry out the you know, mapping of our textures. This software is called Wally. No, not that Wally. I'll leave a link in the description to the download page. All you need to do is click on that link and it should bring you to this web page. Now, currently this web page isn't working for me. I'm not entirely sure why, but for whatever reason, if it's not, I have also got another link which will take you to the Game Banana site where you can download Wally from. So, once you've found a link which works, then just go ahead and download Wally. Once that's downloaded, um, show it in the folder, so click on the little arrow if you're in Chrome, and click on show in folder. And I'm just going to close this browser, so I can concentrate on this. Now, once you've downloaded the Wally, um, raw file or whatever, then you need to extract it. So right click and you can use 7-zip or WinRAR, whatever your extractor software is and then extract here. And if we scroll up, that should have extracted our Wally files for us. There we go. So you can see here, go into this folder and we have this exe application Wally. Um, if we just run that now it's basically a self extractor program, so you can install Wally wherever. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you have it somewhere or you can access it easily. I'm going to put mine on the D drive. And in fact, I'm actually going to go into computer and data and I'm going to create a new folder and call it Wally Textures. And I'm just going to copy the directory name of that and put it in here. There we go. So I'm going to now click unzip, which will extract Wally, and it should put it in the directory we specified. So you can see here in my Wally Textures directory I just made, we have Wally. So, now I can go ahead and run the application by running wally.exe. As you can see, Wally has a very similar layout to Hammer because it's created around the same time. And to begin creating textures, we need to make a WAD file. So, to do that, go to File, then New. Now, you see this drop down box here when the window that pops up where it says type. Just click on that, scroll up to the top, and find the WAD3 Half Life package. Select that, click OK. And here we go. So, the window that has popped up here is just like the texture bars in Hammer, except the window is for a single WAD file rather than all the WAD files in Half Life, and you can add or remove individual textures. So, Wally does support image editing. So you can make textures in Wally, and to do that, you can just go on File, New, 
and this time we're just going to create a normal BMP format image. So if we just scroll down, find Windows Bitmap, select that. Now a name for our bitmap image. I'm going to make a floor texture, so I'm just going to call mine fl underscore first floor. The name doesn't really matter for this particular texture. Um, the dimensions, I'm going to leave mine 64 by 64, but if you do ever change the dimensions, do not type numbers in here. Make sure you use these arrow buttons here, because textures that have dimensions that are not evenly divisible by 16 will not work. And click OK. The reason for that is because of a mip mapping process. OK, so should be presented with another window. And it's in this window where we can edit our texture which we just created. Like any good image editor, you have all your tools like the paintbrush, an eraser, flood fill, etc. on the left hand side in the tools toolbar. I'm going to make um, a metallic floor texture, so I'm going to get a flood fill tool and make a darker grey. Select a dark, dark grey from a colour palette and just do that. Click in the editor to make a dark grey. Now, as well as the standard image editing tools, there are a few extra tools available in Wally. These are the patterned paint tool, the scratch tool, the bullet holes tool and the rivet tool. These are all handy for adding detail to your textures or quickly mocking up just a really quick texture. When using any tools in Wally, at some point you'll need to change something about the tool, even if you're only just changing the size of your paintbrush. Um, it took me a little while to figure out um, the setting, how to use the settings properly for these, but it's fairly straightforward. If we go on the paintbrush, just as a demonstration, click on that, and then over here, bring bring over the tool settings window and you can see here we have the images tab if you go into the settings tab you can actually change the size of the paintbrush change its shape and so on now these tool settings apply for all of these tools so if you set the pencil tool or the eraser tool you'll get different properties for that you can change the magnifying tool how much zoom you get and so on and so forth the time this window comes in most useful is when you start using these special tools I mentioned, uh, which are unique to Wally. So, I'm going to explain how the rivet tool works. I'm not entirely sure how the pattern paint tool works, but if you figure it out, um, let me know. <laughs> um, the scratch tool is fairly straightforward. You can just create scratches, so you can make kind of like Minecraft style block breaking type things going on in your texture. The, the bullet holes tool again, fairly self-explanatory, you can put bullet holes in your in, in your texture. And you can actually change um, the bullet, bullet holes by selecting different bullet hole image, even splat or whatever. If you select the medium one and click on this little mouse button here, like that, you can actually Put in these different sized, different shape um, bullet holes and stuff. Now I'm gonna click on the rivet tool, which is very similar, but a little bit different. The rivet tool actually allows you to put tile stuff in. So if you come over here to the tool settings with the rivet tool sele selected, go to images and then uh, on the drop down list select rivets. Now if you find a rivet you like. Once you've found a rivet you like, um, I'm actually going to go with this crisscross floor, I think. Um, you need to make sure you, every time you select a pattern you want to use, whether you're using the bullet hole tool or the rivet tool or whatever, you need to select your, your pattern and then click on this little mouse button down here and that will set um, this texture to your left mouse button. So now I can just click in here in the texture editor window and just drag and you can see the rivet tool actually kind of tiles um, these patterns so you can the rivet, the, rivet, uh, the rivet tool is really for tiling patterns whereas the bullet holes tool is just kind of repetitive but relatively free um, kind of stuff you can kind of go over the top it's not especially locked to a grid or anything like that but yeah so the rivet tool is very handy as you can imagine 
for just doing lots of repetitive patterns. Um, now I've done that crisscross floor, I think I'm going to actually add a bit more detail and find some bolts or something. Find a large bump like that. And you can see down here the size of the image. If you get a pattern which is too big um, and you don't change the settings properly, and sometimes the whole thing doesn't actually appear properly in your texture editor window. And to change that, you can go into settings, and where it says um, 8 pixel gap at the moment, click on that and drop down list. And then whatever size um, your rivet pattern is, so we're using 16 pixel gap, uh, 16 pixel one, 16 by 16, it says here. So we need to select 16 pixel gap. If you select that in settings and then click and drag in here, you can see you actually get the entire texture now. Now, actually, I just forgot to um, select the pump tool using the mouse button. Always remember to click this little mouse button here in order to select it properly. But um, 16 pixel gap because it's 16 by 16 image. Click and drag, and you can add some of these rivets here, like like so. I might actually change the color. I'm not sure if it lets you change the cut now. It doesn't. For, not for rivets anyway. You can, uh, if you go on the bullet holes and see the stat here, you can actually change that colour to whatever you want, which is quite fun. You can put in some splats on the floor. I might do that actually. <laughs> it's not it's not a brilliant texture, you can tell I don't do art or anything like that. But um, yeah, that's kind of a summary of the tool settings and of course if we wanted to do the whole texture at once, do a 32 pixel gap. And you can see the bigger we make the gap, well, the bigger the gap between the tiling. 16 is usually a pretty good one to go along with, or 8 if you're doing small details. I think I'm going to leave my texture like that. Okay, a very useful aspect of Wally is that you can press Ctrl T while you're in the texture editor. And you can see what your texture looks like when it's tiled. So, um, and then you can actually, if you, if I get the paintbrush tool, I can show you. You can actually draw in tiled mode and see how, do some crazy patterns and stuff with your texture if you really want, um, which is quite fun. Um, I think I'm just going to make a little outline just so you can clearly see. Now you can see each tiled texture there. And using Ctrl T to switch between the two is very handy for getting a rough idea of what your texture will look like in game. Um, I think I'm happy with that now, so I'm going to add it to the WAD file. In order to do that, we need to press Ctrl C in order to copy this texture to our clipboard and go into our WAD file texture browser and then press Control E, not Control V, Control E. Alternatively, you can right click and select paste as new. But once you've done that, this window should pop up anyway. And you basically have to give your texture a name, which will be the name of the texture in the actual WAD file. So I'm going to call mine FL underscore first floor. Click OK, there we go. And now I can see we put the texture in the WAD file. It's simple as that. Before I do anything, um, I'm going to save files before I lose them. Now, with the BMP images, if you're just creating a BMP image which you're just going to chuck in a WAD file, you don't have to save um, the individual image, although I would recommend it because it works as a good backup. As long as you have um, a copy of your, your texture inside the WAD file, however, and you save the WAD file, then you wouldn't necessarily need um, the separate image file. So I'm just going to close that, say no to saving it. And for my um, WAD file, I'm actually going to save that as. So go and file save as. And let's go to the folder we made earlier Wally Textures. And I'm going to call this very first.wad. Save it, and there we go. Now we have saved our WAD file. It's got all the information about our texture. So if WADI crashes or whatever, it should be okay. 
Now I'm going to make a few more textures so I can show you some other things you can do with Wally. I'll begin with the interesting stuff, so let's make an animated texture. In part 3 you may recall that we added a button to open the door. But did you notice that when I used the button, the actual texture on the face changed? If you have two textures for a button in the on and off state for instance, then Half-Life will automatically switch for textures whenever you interact with a button entity. In fact, Half-Life also supports animations at one continuously. So for instance, if you have had several frames of animation as textures, you could apply one of those textures to a funk wall entity, and Half-Life will just loop through those textures over and over, a bit like a GIF image. I'm going to be creating the latter type of animated texture, so one which just loops around over and over, so what we need to do to begin is click on file and new and create another bitmap image. So I'm going to call this one, the name doesn't matter at the moment, um, it will matter, names matter for textures when they are inside the WAD file. Names are very important inside a WAD file, but if you're saving them as an individual image outside a WAD file it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to call this dance of one. Um, I'm going to change the height. Remember to use these arrow buttons. Don't change the height by typing it in, otherwise you'll probably break something. Click OK. And cool. Once you've got your image there, I'm just going to really flood fill, flood fill this. Make a white background. There we go. OK, so this is going to be a texture I'm going to do for my animation. The first frame of my looping animation. So. I think I'm going to do a uh, dancing stick man who's dancing his vote to the 70s. So <laughs> let's really quickly just draw, draw something like that. There we go. So this is going to be my first frame of animation and he's just going to wave his arms up and down. So now we've created the first frame of animation. Remember to hit Ctrl C and then go into your WAD file and then hit Ctrl E or right click and paste as new. And then, now, this is where things uh, become critical. You need to make sure you name this, the animated textures, very carefully. Um, you can see down here it's got a list of characters and what their meaning are, and you can see the animated textures all need to begin with a plus sign. So, if we put a plus sign in, and now we need to say which frame of animation this is. So, because this is the first frame of animation, I'm going to put zero and then underscore and I'm going to call this dancer. So the plus sign specifies um, the property that it's an animated texture. The zero specifies, tells Half-Life what frame of animation this is, so it's the very first frame of animation, or the zero frame I guess you could say. And then everything after that is the actual name of the animation. So now click OK and that's the first frame done. Now you can go back into um, this editor, because we have a copy of it saved in our WAD file, I'm going to hit Control S just to save regularly, um, then we can edit this and start animating the second frame. So I'm just going to change his arms a bit like so. So I'm now going to hit Control C again because I'm happy with that. Go into our WAD file, Control E, and then this time, I want to do the same thing again with a plus sign, but rather than putting zero, because zero is the zero for first frame of animation, we now want to do the second frame of animation. So to do that, we need to put one, and then underscore dancer. Now it's very important you keep um, the name exactly the same apart from this number. If you do not keep the name exactly the same, then the animation will not work. I should also know, I don't know um, how many frames of animation you can actually do, I haven't tested the limit, but my guess is probably um, 10 frames of animation, so up to the character 9 is probably the most you can do. Um, although I haven't tested that, you may be able to do more. Um, so once you've done that, click OK, and you can see now we've got a second frame of animation. And we just need to do this over and over until we have all the frames of anima animation done. Remember, Control c go into your WAD file, Control e 
And then plus the min this time two because it's a third frame of animation. So we've gone frame zero, frame one, frame two. Then underscore dancer, click OK. Do the same thing again. I'm going to skip ahead a bit here so you don't have to <laughs> wait for me to do this. Okay, there we go. I'm happy with all of those. As you can see, I've got six frames of animation from zero through to five, so about six in total. And they all have exactly the same name, except for the number which changes defining the frame in the animation. So you can now close those editors. Make sure to save a WAD file. So always make sure to save regularly. And that's actually this WAD file done. I want to demonstrate how to do one more um, type of texture in Wally now. But to do that is going to require a different WAD file altogether. So if we close this WAD file because we are now done with that. And now we're actually done with our WAD file. Every time you, you, you finish, just completely finish with a WAD file, or you need to test your WAD file in your maps, we need to find that WAD file. So, very first WAD. Select it, copy it, and then navigate to your Half-Life installation directory. So remember, that's in Programs, Steam. Oops. Programs, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then Half-Life. Now, you'll want to put a copy of this WAD file in the VAL folder, and you'll also want to put a copy in your MOD folder. And once you've done that, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to leave this minimized for now. Now, one more texture type I want to do is a decal texture. So decals in Half-Life are simply flat face textures which you use to add detail to your map. So for instance, blood stains, um, you might stick them on the wall and floor and stuff. We can add quite a lot of depth if used well and can tell a story pretty effectively without any words. Decals are also placed actively in game, so bullet hole decals appear where you shoot for instance. So when you're shooting your gun in Half-Life and bullet holes appear, those bullet holes are just flat textures, decals, which are being pasted on the wall. In order for decals to work correctly in your maps, they must be imported into the actual decals.wad file. Decals have a different format to other textures because the actual colour palette for, the, for any decal texture, um, rather than defining colours, the majority of the palette defines how transparent part of the texture is. So index 0, which is this top one, one at the top left, that colour there, is completely transparent, so that would be your white background. And then index 254, not quite the last one, but the one just before the last one, is um, the least transparent, so it's basically opaque, so you can't see through it at all. And then the very last one, only the very last um, index of the colour palette, defines the actual colour of your decal texture. So all decals unfortunately can only have one colour, but because um, they support transparency, then you can get a little bit of depth added to them. So to begin making our decal, we actually need to open up the decals.wad file in the val folder. So go to file and go to open. Now navigate to the half-life directory and then go into valve. You scroll down, until you find decals.wad. Now select that and click open. And as you can see, the little texture browser appears with all of the textures in the decals.wad file. What you want to do in order to get the color pal palette working correctly so you get different layers of transparency on your decal texture, you need to actually copy the palette of another decal texture. So the easiest way to do that is to find a decal of a white background, um, say this big blood one, in the decals.wad file. Double click it to open it, and you can see the palette also loads up. 
Now if you go to colors and then go to save palette and you can save this palette in your Wally textures um, directory. And I'm just going to call this decals default and then save. Now we can close this editor but keep the decals.wad window open. Now I'm going to create a decal texture and rather than creating a bitmap image if we go to new, file new, I'm going to change the bitmap to a half-life texture file so that we can um, so I can show you the color palette and I'm just going to call this graph underscore rb2 because I'm going to create a graffiti texture and so I'm going to make the width something like that once you have a few other dimensions click OK in the name and you can see here a palette chooser and if we select index 255 you can see the index here specifies um, what index we're looking at when you select a colour and index 0 remember is the most transparent so that will be our background and index 255 defines the actual colour of the decal and then index 254 is the least transparent so for now I'll just leave it on its default palette so I just click OK but what we want to do really is open up that palette we just saved from the other decal so go to colours load palette and then decals default to power double click that to open it just like just like that and now if you go in colors again and then edit palette and then go to index 255 double click it and change it to whatever color you want the decal to be so i'm going to create some graffiti um just a revolving barrel logo from this decal which i'm going to stick on a wall somewhere in the map so click on ok once you find the color you like then ok again now you don't actually want to draw anything in your texture editor with the actual color you want to get black if you want the black color selected if you want to do any drawing or editing or anything what will happen is the all the black pixels in the image will be changed into um the color index 255 which is red in this case and all the greys will also change to that colour, but the lighter grey you get, the more transparent it will appear. So in game it will look red, although it will look black in here for now. You'll see what I mean later on when you play it in game. Um, so I'm just going to create some funky graffiti. A terrible handwriting right there and I'll actually demonstrate um, the different layers of transparency by kind of go, working up through the different greys so when we get in game we should see that each of these greys as we're going down um, gradually gets more transparent And you'll see that later on, as I say, when we launch a map with this texture in as a decal. Okay, so that's my decal texture, I'm happy with that. Hit Ctrl C. Actually, I should just mention one more thing. Make sure the background is completely white. Because if you want a transparent background completely, you need to make sure that you get index 0 of the colour palette. And get the flood tool and just make sure it is completely white. You should probably do that the first um, instance you ever create a decal texture. It would be a bit easier. But um, anyway, once you're happy with your texture, use Control c to copy it. And then inside your decals.wad, we actually want to actually import. We want to actually import the texture, the decal texture. So use Control e or right-click and paste as new. And this time we want to use the open curly brace because that signifies transparency in our image. So open curly brace and then I'm going to call my graph RB2 like earlier. Then click OK. Now if you scroll down you should see your texture appears there. Remember to save 
P and word file. And there we go. If you open up a different um, texture, then we open your decal texture, you should, the palette should have stayed the same, um, apart from that colour, of course. If for whatever reason um, your palette doesn't look like this, um, a different colour is fine, but if all of this looks different colours and things, then, you might have, then it might have been corrupted, so you might just want to reload the colour palette and everything. If you have any issues with transparency and game not working, then that would be probably why you've got an incorrect colour palette. But anyway, now we've done that, we can close that texture, and there we go. I'm actually going to close this now. I'm not going to save the individual image, and that's it. I'm going to close Wally now. And remember, we just edited this decals.wad file in the Half Life Valve directory. I'm going to copy this and go into my mod folder and make sure it has a copy there as well. There we go. So now it should definitely work in our mod as well as when we're launching maps from Hammer. Right. So now to test out all those textures we made, we need to launch Half Life SDK or Hammer. So launch it with Steam. And we can create a map to test it all out in. Before we create any maps or anything, however, we need to reconfigure Hammer um, to find our new WAD files. So to do this, if you go to Tools and then Options, and then go to Textures, and then click on Add WAD. And if you find the Half-Life installation directory, so again, Programs, Steam, Steam apps, common, and Half Life. Then, once you're in the Half Life directory, um, you want to go into the Valve directory where we just placed um, our WAD files and find the very first WAD, open that. There we go. We shouldn't have to add the decals.watch because that should have been added in part two. Um, if for whatever reason that's not showing up, just add it, add it anyway. Now click apply and click OK. Now we should probably close Hammer just to make sure that um, that's all working properly and then reopen it. And hopefully all our textures should be loaded up. So if we go to file, and create a I've actually created a new map already but I'll just create a new create a new map and if we click on browse in the texture browser you can see our see our dancing stick man has appeared here. Hopefully our decal has appeared as well. Now for whatever for some reason my decal texture isn't actually appearing. Um to fix that if we go on options again, tools options, textures um, just add it, add the file again. You'll probably get end up getting duplicate um, duplicates, but hopefully it'll work properly when it should show up. There we go. Now I've added that, and you can see it's appeared here. You can see my decal texture. Um, I'm going to find that floor we made earlier on, and I'm just going to create a box test out our textures in. Just going to hollow it out because I'm lazy. Don't hollow out brushes if you can help it. Okay, there's our disgusting floor. That's really horrific really, isn't it? <laughs> oh well. And I'm now going to go on the block tool. Bars for another texture. I'm going to get my dancing man this time. There he is. You get the first frame of animation, so zero, the zero frame. And I'm gonna whack in this right here. That looks absolutely fine. And I'm also gonna add a player spawn point. So our player can actually load into the map. That'd be useful. Make sure he's not stuck in the floor or anything. And 
one more thing we have to do to get this animated texture to work, I should mention, is we need to make sure this is tied to a funk wall entity. So if you tie to entity and funk wall, that's fine. Give it a name if you want. I don't think the name matters as long as it's tied to a funk wall entity. I'm just going to call it te uh, test. There we go. And now finally the decals. Um, the decal tool is this one down here with a little target on the block. If you select that and then find the decal texture we made earlier and you can stick it wherever you want on the walls. Um, you might notice here when I placed the decal down I had the selection tool and the decal tool selected by the way. If you have a selection if you have the decal tool and the block tool it won't work. Make sure you have selection tool and decal tool. But um you notice that this this decal is the right way around, but this decal is not showing the right way around. And the easiest way to fix that is to deselect the decal tool, set the toggle texture application tool, and then select the texture behind the decal itself, and then check this little box down here which says face. Click apply, that's fine. Close that. Now if we get rid of this decal, we can try and select it and get and delete it. And then place it again. Should be the right way around. There we go. So now our decal has been placed the right way around. And if we go in game in the mode, we should see all this working. So I'll compile it and I'll see you in game. No bad. As, as long as you put all those WAD files in the valve directory and your mod directory we should appear in game and there we go look at that amazing driving stick man his arms are waving and all <laughs> and as you can see over here we have our wonderful decal you can see the transparency working there it's all in red and it gets um, more and more transparent as we go down that gradient there and of course the floor textures are all working as well. And that's it. That's how to create custom textures and add them to your mod. So thanks for watching. Uh, leave a thumbs up if you found the tutorial useful. And be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for future videos. Until next time. Bye.